Hey guys, so we're going to create a, a bootable Raspberry Pi SD card. So we're, we're installing Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS on, a, on an SD card. So our SD card's inserted now. We can see we have a few disks in our, uh, our system. This uh, 16 gig drive here is the one that is, this is an SD card. We're gonna, we're gonna basically image this. So we're gonna flash that drive. So first thing we do, so we, we have our Raspberry Pi imager here are already. And I, I feel like I should, you know, you, you can basically just install this off of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you, you download it from the official Raspberry Pi site and just install it. But um, basically this is the most easy thing you could use. Now there are other tools, you could use Etcher also. Um, and that's, that's you're, you're probably gonna want Etcher if you use other OS's, although this can handle, you know, multiple different OS's, not just Raspberry Pi OS. Um, anyways, here we go. Now this used to be called Raspbian, now it's called Raspberry Pi OS. Um, it was, and I believe still is based on Debian. Any case, um, 32 bit, I believe their 64 bit OS is actually, um, in beta right now. Um, last I heard, but, um, the reason they, you know, they have a 64, four bit chip and they're still using a 30 bit, two bit OS is because that some of them are 32, some of the chips are 32 bit and it's hard to maintain two, uh, versions of the OS and converting things from 32 bit to 64 bit can be, uh, very, very time consuming but they're, uh, they have a 64-bit version out now. Anyways, right now the standard version that they have here is 32-bit and we're gonna use that because uh, we expect it to work as expected and we kind of have some expected behavior that we want for the project that I'm gonna use this specific uh, SD card for. Anyways, that, that's about it. Um, I just wanted to record this quick video showing how to do this um, so I can refer back to it in other videos where I show you how to do things with the Raspberry Pi. And I'll say, hey, if you wanna you know, know how to create a SD card, just check this other video that I did. That's kind of the purpose of this video. Um, anyways, basically you just say, uh, you know, you just select uh, the OS you want. Actually, I should take another look at that. So you have other choices like Ubuntu, Libra, Elec, RetroPie, Risk OS, all this other great stuff, right? And you can also use a custom image. So you could use anything you want, really. And there are some nice tools like EEPROM recovery. You could erase it, all that all that nice stuff. So you could use this as a general purpose SD card flasher if you want, kind of. Um, you, you can also use, if you want to get a third party tool, not from Raspberry Pi, you could use uh, Etcher, which is an excellent tool that I use for a lot of things these days. Anyways, um, we're, we're gonna click on Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. Now we uh, choose our SD card. Whoops. There we go. Did that? Yeah, that properly selected it. Okay. Make sure you choose the correct card. Don't overwrite something with data on it. Be really, really careful when you do that. This is why I keep this disks tool here in case I plug in like a big, uh, you know, an external USB drive with critical data. I don't wipe my data out accidentally. Make sure you know what drive you're using. Um, anyways, basically select the OS, select the card, and hit write. And uh, that is about all there. Why, why did it do that? All right. Hit write and say yes. There you go. Now it wants my password because we need root privileges or admin privileges to actually write directly to a device. Anyways, um, that, that's all you really have to do. Now we just wait while it writes it. it. This might take a little while, so I'm gonna you know speed this up through the magic of video editing. But um, yep, th this is as simple as it is. Now while, while that writes, before I go speeding anything up, I'd actually like to open up a browser real quick. And um, let's go to uh, Raspberry Pi's official site. All right, so Raspberry Pi, it's it, easier than navigating their site. Just search for Raspberry Pi Imager. You can go here and uh, this should be the tool. So or, or not. 
So here, here you go. So I guess you can just navigate to it very easily. Um, yeah, just go to software and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find your way here. Anyways, um, you, you can download, so it detects what OS you're on. It knows I'm on Ubuntu, so you can download the package for Ubuntu. Let's just download that just so you can see it. Um, keep, now if you're on Windows or Mac OS, you can download the package for your respective OS. Um, now if you're on Raspberry Pi OS and you want to create an SD card from there, you can say sudo apt install RPI imager. Um, and this might be in the Ubuntu uh, repo too, but I don't install it from there or I don't attempt to. So anyways, download for Ubuntu and here are the packages. You could click on it and open it up with a package manager or you could open it up with, uh, you, you could install it from the terminal. So you, you could say, and this is already installed, but um, you, you could go to um, downloads and we see here, this is, uh, this is what we just downloaded, um, Imager right here. Now, notice I actually already had this installed. So it looks like I have version 1.4 of Imager. This is what I installed last time. That's actually what I'm running there, 1.4. So I, I should actually, um, I, I probably should upgrade this to uh, 1.6. So I'll, I'll actually show you how to do that once this finishes writing. So I'm not gonna update it while I'm writing my SD card but I, I am going to update it. So I'm, I'm going to let this write and um, once it once it finishes, I'll probably speed this up and once it finishes, I will uh, show you how to upgrade the, the Raspberry Pi imager. Now if you were down installing it for the first time, it's going to be almost the same process. All right, and there we go. <clears throat> we finished writing our SD card. So that's all you have to do to write an SD card. So we can now remove it from the reader, which I am going to do now. And uh, I'll show you how to upgrade this. So there we go, pulled my SD card out. I now have my working SD card. Um, let's see here. Now I'm gonna close this Raspberry Pi imager. And let's say, uh, so you're gonna wanna use sudo, right? So sudo uh, dpkg-i. Now you could probably just click on this if you open it up in the GUI and a package manager will come up and you know the software center or whatever. And it'll probably ask you for your password and you can install it that way. You might have some issues, you might not. But um, all right, so this is the, I'm gonna do it from the command line. This is just easier and less painful. So this is the old one that I was just running now. Now here's the newer version of the imager. Um, let's copy this and let's install it. Let's see how this works with something already on there. There we go, that was pretty quick. Um, I gotta wonder if that worked. All right, so yeah, looks like that updated it automatically for me. So we can see Raspberry Pi Imager is installed and at version 162 now. So that's kind of nice. Um, let's click on my link here and this should, um, there we go, it launches it. And there we are, version 162. Um, choose OS. Um, so yeah, it still gives us a similar, so you know, it's different. I don't know why this is different. Um, emula oh, so the, the menu is a little bit different. All right, so recommended is still their 32-bit version of the OS, <clears throat> and it looks like they changed it so that this is separated into sections, so <clears throat> you could choose uh, other Raspberry Pi OS versions. So it looks like it gives us, you know, this version with no desktop and uh, I guess the full version. All right, anyways. Um, let's see, other general purpose OS. You got Ubuntu Manjaro, that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, and Risk OS, all right. And Media Player. So re real, really, the gave, it gave us some more options, but it also, uh, it organized them based on what they're good for, what they're normally used for. A couple emulation 
things, other specific purpose. All right, you got Octopi for 3D printers. That's kind of cool. That's actually really cool. Um, Homebridge, HomeKit, all right, Home Assistant, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's all nice and everything. Um, I know there's a an OS specifically for monitoring things, like setting up a Raspberry Pi-based security camera. I don't know that that's, that's not on here as far as I can tell. But all right, there we go. That's how we upgraded um, you know, Raspberry Pi Imager. Now, if you don't have Raspberry Pi Imager, that's actually how you would install it initially. Download the package, go to your downloads directory, and just say, uh, you know, sudo dpackage-i imager, right? And, and it's installed. You, know, you download it from your Raspberry Pi site here, go to the official Raspberry Pi site, go to software, and download the version for your OS. Um, I downloaded Ubuntu. If you're on Windows, you're probably just going to end up clicking on the installer, installing it, having to use an administrator password or whatever. Um, Mac OS has their own special things where you click on it and drag an icon over, but it's almost the same thing. Um, now, before I forget, um, I, I wanted to show you how you can enable SSH and uh, Wi-Fi uh, before e even having uh, started up your Raspberry Pi. This is useful if you're running your Raspberry Pi in headless mode without a keyboard and monitor. So if, if you if you want to be able to access it remotely over the network and it, and that's a wireless network, um, you're going to want to configure it ahead of time on your SD card before you even plug your SD card into the uh, you know, but before you even plug it into uh, your Raspberry Pi. So um, let, let's, I'm going to show you how you do that. Um, let me clear this real quick. And uh, all right, so let's, let's jump over here and um, we can, this is our SD card that we just created. So we're, we're going to click on the boot partition and we're going to mount that partition. We could do this from the command line too, but I'm doing it from the disk tool today. Um, and now we're going to, let's see, what's mounted? So we have boot mounted under media user one boot. Now, if you're if you're doing this on a Mac or Windows, it's going to be slightly different, but you're basically just going to want to open up this partition, which you should be able to do. Uh, um, you, you should probably see that, you should see this in Finder if you're on a Mac, or you should see it in... Uh, you know, Windows Explorer on Windows, it should just show up. It should be no big deal. But any, anyways, um, you're basically going to do the same thing. Um, and here we could do this with a, you know, a graphical file manager too. But I'm just doing it from the command line because it's easier. Anyways, so it happens to be so. Here I am in media media user one boot. Might be different if you're on a different distro like Arch Linux or something. But anyways, I'm on Ubuntu. So if I check where my current directory is mounted, this is on dev stc one. And that is our SD card, DevSDC1. That's the boot partition right here, first partition on DevSDC. So um, that's where we are now. You, you type ls and you see all our, you know, like our kernel image and, you know, all the stuff you need to boot up. So that's all fine and great. Now what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just touch. Actually, we need to, we need, um, oh, it looks like this is owned by, uh, my current user, I guess, because this is a, a fat file system and it doesn't have the same permissions. If you if we were to open, mount this root FS, that's actually ext4 and owned by root. This one's owned by whatever user mounts it, which is kind of convenient. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and touch a file called SSH. Now that file existing, when this Raspberry Pi boots up, it's going to see that this file exists and it's going to enable SSH for you. So that's a quick way you can enable SSH without having to mess around with any config files before even booting your Raspberry Pi. So um, now if we want Wi-Fi to be enabled, you are going to grab, you're going to create a file called wpasupplicant.conf and we're going to go like this. You're going to actually have to put your configuration in here and you can use nano if you don't like uh, VI. If you don't know how to use VI, you probably should try using nano because nano is uh, pretty straightforward and easy. VI is not if you don't know VI. Um, anyways, so you're going to create this file called WPA Supplicant. Um, I'm just copying a, you know, a demo configuration out of my notes here. So there we go. Um, now, you know, it says update config equals one, you know, some other things about net dev and 
um, you know you could change your country code if you if you really want to or if you're in a different country you probably should that makes sense but the important things are the SSID and your pre-shared key which is your Wi-Fi password so fill these in with your info and uh, I'm actually gonna fill them in with my info as soon as I cut the video off but yeah you're gonna want to fill these in with your SSID and password um, but basically put that there and save it and what's going to happen is when the Raspberry Pi boots up, it's going to take this WPA supplicant file and it's going to copy it over to the actual location where the WPA supplicant file exists or where it's actually supposed to live. And then it's going to use that as its actual Wi-Fi wi configuration. And that's, that's basically how you do that. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Might want to give us a thumbs up. Might want to subscribe for way more interesting content. We do like single board computers, 3D printers, electronics, uh, you know, servers, coding, hardware, software, all kinds of interesting technology related stuff you're not going to want to miss. So hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so YouTube actually lets you know when we come out with new videos. And even more important, leave a comment down below. If you know something that I don't know, or you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say, just leave a comment down below. Um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.